I'll make a directory in here to play around in. I'll open a terminal in here. Okay, let's make a directory. There's my folder. Make multiple folders. I'll make a file. I could put phone.txt and there it is. But what about if I wanted phone numbers with a space? Well, I'll just put it in single quotes. So the word parts in the single quotes and the .txt part is actually outside and that's correct. What if I want to move phone.txt into my folder? I'll use the move command, so that's mv and phone.txt into, I don't type into, but this is like saying into, my folder and enter and if I look in there, there it is. I can also use the mv command to rename things. So say I want to rename my folder to something else. My folder to my whatever. And it's been renamed to my whatever. And phone numbers, it's mv. And I'll change that just to phone like I had that other one. And that's done. So what if I want to move these three folders into that one? I'll look at the manual first. So I put the man command in and then for the move command. This is the one I'm looking for. Move all source arguments into the directory. I can use Q to quit. I can go MV help instead. So move all source arguments into directory, that's the one. I'll copy that. I'll clear that out of the way. I didn't type in the move command, so I'll go control A to get to the start. And there they are. I can use the RM command to delete my whatever. And phone.txt. If I try and remove my whatever, there's going to be a problem. I make another folder, if I put the recursive command, that'll get rid of it and anything inside it. If I put the recursive for my whatever, it's going to get rid of that as well. This is the permanent way to do things, whereas during the graphical user interface sends things into the rubbish bin. Okay, what if I want to move hello into welcome? Well, I'll use the copy command. So I want the hello.txt file to go into the welcome folder. Well, a copy of it anyhow. It's not the move command. So we're looking there. We've got hello.txt. I'll look at the help for copy. So r and little r and recursive will copy directories recursively. But what about copying files recursively? Let's see how that went. Perfectly. They're all in there. And obviously you can copy folders into that folder recursively too. Okay, good, good. So let's delete all that. So there's nothing in there now. What about the ls command to look inside this directory? So I'll do ls and I can see what's in there. I can see the welcome folder. I can see the three text files, I can see the three folders in blue. What about more information? I'll put ls all, it'll be hyphen all. That's how you do it, because these are the flags. And I've combined two, I could also just do ls hyphen a hyphen l, but you can combine them. So what we've got here with ls all, or al, is more information. We can see the creation date of everything, October 5, and it was made by me. You can see the permissions on these folders and files. To change permissions, use chmod. Say I wanted to make this number one text file executable. If I look at properties here, we can see permissions. It says allow executing file as program. I can do it here, but um, I'll do it here. I can do user, u for user, plus execute, execute permission with x and one dot text, or just plus x. And remember, it's only because I'm in the home directory I have full permission to do this because I'm the user. Anywhere else in the file system I have to put sudo. The same goes for any commands like move or copy or make directory, touch, etc. So I look here, look at the properties and I see permissions and it's got 
allow execution as a program. So let's remove the permission. I'm going to use user this time. I don't need to. And I'm going to put a minus. And we'll look here now. Permissions. Hang on. What did I do wrong there? Okay, it's been removed. So um, if I put an execute permission here on one dot text, you'll see one dot text will change here. So um, lsal and the one dot text, we can see it's green now, and it's got an execute permission on it with the X. So if we look, we can see an X here, but we can't see any X's on the other ones. If I execute, um, I'm opening a terminal in this directory. Control Shift plus plus. In this directory that I've called commanding, I have a directory called random stuff or folder. And in that, another directory or folder called others. And in here, text files and ODT files and a folder with .odt and a, another folder or directory with .text. So let's find the text files in there. If there's a gap between words like here, use quotes, double quotes or single quotes. So what we're searching for is text files. I'm going to use the iname command. iName is case insensitive, unlike name. So match anything that's a text file or will it. As we can see, we also picked up a folder.txt which obviously isn't a text file. So I'm going to use the up arrow and get that command back. And I'm going to put a flag here of type and F for file. We can see here a folder didn't come up this time, so that's good. But what about if I only wanted the folder? Then I put D for directory here, and there it is. Same goes for the directory with ODT ending. I got the directory, or I can get the files that are .odt. The manual command will find a lot more things for you for find. Here we are. And here's I name, which I used before, which tells you here it's case insensitive. You can go by file size if you want. You can execute a command on the file, say to delete the file, Q for quit. I can just find all files by simply typing in the type of F. The same for directories. Notice how the find command is recursive and can go and find directories within directories and text files within that, etc. This isn't a text file, this is a uh, folder, but um, it, it can do that. It can go through folders just by using the top folder from the hierarchy. You can also use the find command to search by permissions and ownership and all sorts of things. You can just search on Google to look that up, those more advanced things. As I can see on this howtogeek.com page, you can put a forward slash followed by a star to find words or parts of words. So say this one here, some other file, I can just go, I'll keep the quotes here and just say I know the first two words. So some other, and then after the quotations, I can put a backslash, a hit enter, and you can see it found some other file. It's printed out here in the others directory. So I've made a directory called grep in my home directory and in it I've put three files. Here they are. I would normally open a terminal by right clicking and opening a terminal in that folder. But I'm gonna use my sticky terminal from GNOME extensions that I installed just before. Control shift plus plus to enlarge it. Okay, so I wanna get it into this directory. So I'm gonna go CD and that tilde and grep. Okay, that will get me into that directory. So the cd command changes directory, as you probably know. Okay, so according to cybercity.biz, that's cybercity with an i for city. Okay, so if I go grep words to dot text and whoops, okay, the word I'm trying to find. So if I go grep cat, actually I want it case insensitive, so hyphen i, using the flag, the i flag, and they'll make it case insensitive, and cat, putting with a small c, but it's actually 
capital C, and the file name's words one dot text. And okay, what went wrong here? So I'm in the grep directory. I use ls to list what's in there. Oh, okay. There's words two. So there we are. We have a cat in red there. So here are the words in this text file street, shopping, ski, surf, all capitalized at the start. So Control Shift T gets me another tab. I can do it again and again. Just close those tabs. Okay, I'm in Snapcraft, going to install VS Code. So that's what I need to install, that Snap on Ubuntu. You can install Snap on quite a few varieties of Linux. Control Shift V, administrative password. We can look at the manual for Snap. So the manual command, Snap. That's very verbose, so I'm going to press Q to quit. We can use the which command to see where code is installed. And we can see it's in snap, so directly in the root directory. I use the change directory command to the root directory of Linux and ls, just ls. And just here, we can see snap. You can see the snaps I've got on my computer in there. If I just go CD, it'll get me back to my home directory. There we are. Exit to get rid of that tab. And I could have just easily have done snap list to see all the installed snaps I have. You can use the refresh command to update a snap, but it does it automatically anyway, so you don't normally need to do that, unless you want to do it immediately. You can disable snaps and remove a snap here. Pseudo snap remove the software name here. I'm going to make these text documents open with a different text editor. So I'm going to go to open with and it was on G edit and I'm going to use VS code. So there's default, close that. Now, if I double click on that, control shift plus plus to enlarge. So we can see I've got all these words in there and they're all capitalized. So we can see the Case insensitivity did its thing. Even if I take the T off cat, it'll still find it. In fact, even if I take the A off cat, it's still found it because there's only one word with a C in this file. We've got F grep, which is more for like strings kind of thing. Now I'll try and find the same word in all three of these files here. So I've got words two, words one, words three. So if I go grep, case insensitive eye cat for words one and words three i'm going to have to put them in quotes single quotes or double quotes just because there's a space between words and one any spaces needs to be surrounded by quotes that's the same for anything in the command line we can see the results for each text file here that's words one, words three. They all have cat in them. So I'm going to use the cat command to display what's in words three. So what did I do wrong there? No space. Okay. So the cat command prints out what's inside a text document. So this here is a pipe, which allows you to put one command into another. So I'm going to do the cat command but then I'm going to put a space and I'm going to put a pipe. So shift to get the pipe instead of the backslash. And then I can put that straight into the grep command. So I can go grep and just the search word, which is cat, actually case insensitive cat. And it still found it. So it wasn't going directly through the file now. It just grabbed the output of this command like it was here and then push that straight into the grep command for cat.
So this time we're going to use the recursive flag and I'm going to make a directory in here. Rep recursive, the name of the search word, cat, and then the name of that directory. So that didn't come up because I didn't put the case insensitive flag in. So I'm going to put the I flag just behind the R there. You could put it in front if you wanted, it doesn't make any difference. And there we are. We can see cats in every one of those files in that directory. I could have separated the flags, but I like to keep them together, bunched up. So I'm on the phoenixmap.com website. I'm just going to go into the them3 directory. I can just highlight this, go control shift C, and then go CD control shift V. And I'm in there. So look at the output from this. I've added more words into the text file, category cattle, as well as cat. So they all start with cat. And when I typed in cat, they all came out. We can see we can use the W flag and it will just search for the word you're looking for. So if I go up here and I keep the case insensitive flag and I add a W to it to get that word, I get it, I just get cat now. W is for whole word. And if I put a star like they have, it'll find all of them in all the text files because it just means whatever's in that directory, which is these three files. I can do an inverse search. So I'll just put a V here and it'll find everything in that text document that isn't the word cat. There we are. So we've got everything in there that isn't cat. In fact, we get everything that isn't cattle. Or category as well because that matches cat so I'll add the W to the flag and we just didn't get cat now so we've got category and cattle okay so that T was just the end of the text there so we've got everything but cat now we can use the X flag just to match a string I'm just gonna put that category here save it there we are that category so I'm on howtogeek.com and we're going to count how many words there are the same. So I'm going to put cat and we're going to use case insensitive. So I'll just put cat lowercase as well. So I've got uppercase and lowercase cat. So on C for count, I've got I for case insensitive and put it anywhere I want. And we can see I've got seven counts of cat. So I've got seven counts of cat, I've got all these cats, I've got cattle number six, and I've got category number seven. So here we're going to pipe again. I'm going to get all this and copy it and double it. There we go, I've pasted it again, I've got heaps in there. So we've got that being piped into less, and there we are. So that wasn't enough words to use less, so I'm going to put even more in, copy and paste, copy and paste again and again, there we are. Okay, now we can scroll with less. We can see the colon here. So we're scrolling up and down how many there are. I've got to the end now. See, we've got end and Q for quit to get out. So I'm on howtoforge.com. I'm going to use the E flag. The E flag allows you to search for hyphenated words without Linux thinking that you're putting in a flag. So I've actually opened up words one this time. So I'll be using that. I want to get one of these from the hyphen up to here. I, I could use single hyphens, but I'm just being more grammatically correct here for saying published, when, yesterday, today, etc. So we'll say yesterday, the word yesterday. So we're gonna go hyphen yesterday. So it looks like another flag, right? It looks like we've got an I flag and it looks like we've got a yesterday flag. But hang on, I've got to put in the E. So Linux knows that we want to search for yesterday and it found it there we are it didn't think it was a flag and never we'll get that too and there we are so we're going to limit a search to the first three lines with hyphens i'll put more here we're not going to end up getting these two so i'll get this back up and i'm just going to put the hyphen alone now since we've got the e flag okay sorry i forgot to put the thing in um so it's going to look a mess if i just put m3 here you see this E is joined to the M now. Linux doesn't know what it's looking for. So I'm going to go control C to stop that. 
and I'm going to separate the M3 to a separate flag. There we are, perfect. And we're just looking for the first three hyphenated words. I didn't put the name of anything, otherwise it'll only get one of them. So I'm getting all of them with just the hyphen. So what's the problem here? Maybe it's the order. There we are, it was the order. So I had to have the M3 first and then the IE saying for the hyphen. So it had to be just before the hyphen. So the M3 it just muddled it up. So now we've got what we want. We've just got these three lines. The E saying anything hyphenated. So there we go. And we reduced it just to those lines. We could say the first two lines if we wanted. There we go, the first two lines. Also, you don't need to name text files. You can just use a star and put it dot text to get all the text files searched in a directory. In the them3 directory here, we see the output of ls and we can see we've got blue bike, blue fence, green bike, green fence, etc., pink bike, pink bike, pink fence, words, etc., etc., etc. So I can pipe the output of that into the grep command and specifically we want the hyphenated ones so I'm going to make it insensitive first we don't really need insensitive for the hyphenated ones here in our example but sorry get the flag insensitive and E for a hyphenated search and we're looking for all the bikes so here we go we're going to get this output going into the grep command and grep command is going to look through all this and find the bike one the bike ones i should say there we are we've got the blue bike the green bike and the pink bike actually sorry i didn't even put a hyphen on there so there we are we've got the hyphen on there now so i'm on the linuxsize.com website i'm going to use regular expressions if we want to get the start of a sentence like this one here or a line i use this symbol Got to surround it all with quotes, and this is words one. Okay, I've got to surround that as well. Okay, so it seemed to have just got that one, but what about this one? This is at the start, of course, it's not case insensitive. Okay, we'll get both of them now. I for insensitive, there we are. Soup is tasty if made well, and this soup here. So that's the start of a sentence, and now we want one that has soup at the end of a sentence. So to get the end of the sentence, we just use the dollar sign and take out that from the front. So we've got soup at the end of the sentence here, and we've got soup on its own because it's actually at the end of the sentence as well as being the start of the sentence because it's just one word, it can be what you want. Now to just get this one, we need to isolate it and that means we need to get both at the end of the line and the start so that gets the individual word whoops um, that should not be a dollar sign at the start there we are and we got that one there we are we got soup so i'm going to show you the history command and there we are you can see a history of commands i've used and it just keeps on going remembers quite a history so what if I want to reuse this command, number 445? Well, I just put in an exclamation mark and then put in the number 445 and boom, there we are. This article from Make Tech Easier for Ubuntu is also useful for Linux Mint. So you have to install Libby mobile device. This is how you do it here. Apt install is how you install things from the command line on Ubuntu and also Linux Mint. So I've already installed this, so I'm going to uninstall them so we can do it again. sudo apt remove, so the word is not uninstall, it's actually remove, and control shift V.
Sorry, I mean, this actually already comes installed in Linux Mint. You don't need to install it. So I've actually removed what was on there and what was good. Okay. So we're installing it now. So that's the install command for both of these libraries. I don't need to do a capital Y. We also need iFuse to connect iOS to Linux Mint and, and get your big files off, etc. So when I uninstalled those other programs, I also uninstalled iFuse with them. That's what happens. So I had to install it again. So on your Linux Mint, you shouldn't need to touch anything. You shouldn't need to install any of this. It should already be on here. So this is what I need to do next. So I'll type in iDevice pair and pair and press enter. So it's saying, please enter the passcode on the device and retry. But what I actually have to do is press on trust on my iPhone. So I had a pop-up that says trust this computer. And then on the button with the blue writing that says trust, I say trust. And then I put in my passcode. Okay, the passcode's in. So I'll use the up arrow and bring that command back. Enter. Okay, success. We're now paired with the device, which brings us to this next step. So um, I'm gonna have to make a directory for the iPhone to connect to. Okay. I can use the make directory command to make a directory for the iPhone in the home directory. So I do ls, do ls all, and okay, I'll just do ls. So we can see we're in the home directory. Oh, that's right, I already made a directory for this called phone fuse. So um, we'll remove that. It's a directory, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, sorry. So put recursive. I'll make a new directory. So it doesn't matter where I open this terminal, I'm going to put a tilde followed by a forward slash. And that means the home directory. And then I'm going to type in the iOS here directory. And it should work. Okay, let's see, did it work? And there it is, on the left here. So I'll go to DCIM and into 100 Apple. And there was everything, including large videos. You'll see large videos there that you normally wouldn't see in the normal one, like 30 gigabyte files, etc. And I can unmount iFuse from here. It's unmounted. You can't type in iFuse unmount there's this other weird command you've got to do to unmount it. So why not just do it on the graphical interface? I device pair this command. Make sure you made a directory for the phone. You can even make the directory using the graphical user interface. And then you just have to go iFuse and into the directory. And be sure to put this home directory thing in front of it. So you always get it right from wherever you are, wherever you've opened the terminal.